Hey, you watching this right now, as soon as you finish this episode of Hot News, come on over to our Twitch channel, twitch.tv forward slash UF Dissolvable, because we're actually live streaming NVIDIA's keynote for their CES 2021 stuff. So in case you want to know about what's going on with NVIDIA live, come join us on Twitch right this moment as Hot News is coming out. Holy Tuesday, everybody. Welcome back to your latest edition of Hot News. There's a lot of CES content to go through, including Intel's apparently back at the top. LG's got a lot of exciting OLED stuff and your iPhone 12 may or may not kill you or a loved one. We're gonna get into all of that after we talk about today's video sponsor, Dr. Squatch, my friends. This is the soap that I use so that I don't smell identical to my wife. I need a distinct scent of my own and that's where Dr. Squatch helps me to do that. But they don't just make me smell good, they also make me feel good for using their products because they use natural ingredients without harsh chemicals and it's handcrafted in small batches and cold process to make sure that you're getting the best out of your soap as well as making sure that it's not going to leave behind residue that's just not good on your skin. Dr. Squatch is some great soap. I absolutely love it. My cedar citrus, as I've constantly mentioned, is my favorite. But honestly, I just leave the extra soap that I haven't gotten to yet in the office because I think it just makes everything smell better. So I leave it as kind of a an aroma, a, aromanizer, a, a, a aroma breather. Yes. Use coupon code when you check out for 20% off your purchase with Dr. Squatch. Check it out. Smell great. And also be squatchy, friends. My tagline for him. Bad transition out of the ad spot. It looks like Intel is uh, topping the charts once again when it comes to beating AMD. At least that's according to their own benchmarks coming out of their CES keynote presentation. We're finally getting Rocket Lake, which is going to potentially move us away from Skylake. However, it's not gonna do so right just yet. It's supposed to be coming out in Q1 2021, which likely means towards the end of March. We're gonna get up to eight cores and 16 threads, which is a two core step down from the previous generation, but faster memory, PCI Express 4.0, and as I mentioned, it's a brand new architecture. Also getting faster Project Z graphics, which could make it really decent. However, in just regular gaming benchmarks, Intel doesn't disclose a whole lot, but compared to the 5900X, you can see here that Intel is now once again at the top in the games that they chose with the settings that they chose with the things that they chose. So you can actually find out everything that they chose at Intel com forward slash performance index. But as of filming it right now, I actually can't pull it up. So I don't have all of those full details with regards to what the benchmark specifications are around here. But Intel does look to take back the lead against AMD and they're showing versus a 12 core AMD CPU. They are getting 162 FPS versus AMD is 159 in Metro Exodus. So obviously wait till third party benchmarks come out before you get super excited. But it doesn't look like Intel is dead they're bringing us new generations of stuff. You can see here, new core architecture, 20 PCI Express 4.0 lanes, new AI capabilities, and engine in-game optimizations for you. Rise and shine. I'll leave a link in the video description so you can find out all of the details of the new Cypress Cove setup on the Rocket Lake CPUs, but they do seem to be particularly impressive from Intel, even if they don't come and smash AMD out of the water, as long as they're priced appropriately, everything should be fine. However, However, as of right now, I haven't heard anything about the price. Maybe that's come out in the meantime, but it, I, it really just, if they can undercut AMD by 50 bucks and they're getting right around the same performance, maybe Intel might make sense to go that way. We'll have to wait and see. But alongside the launch of the new CPUs, we're also getting new disclosures of motherboards on the Z590 lineup. You can see here, here's MSI's. That, that godlike is looking heckin' delicious. Oh my gosh, that matches what I really love about the vision from Gigabyte and just, yes, MSI, you're doing the right thing. This is going in the right direction. I appreciate that. We also got some Asus models right here in case those interest you, as well as an Asus model of the WRX80 Threadripper Pro platform. This is a pretty big deal because it was typically OEM, but this is going to be the first third party that we've seen. That's a beefy, beefy, beef motherboard. Holy, that's a lot. It's built for pros, I'll tell you. But I know what to do with my TV, and that's play video games. And LG knows that, which is why apparently they're going to be integrating Google Stadia and GeForce Now into their smart TVs later this year. This is only going to apply to TVs released in 2020 and onwards, but you will be able to get those two cloud streaming services available on the, your LG TVs. NVIDIA's cloud streaming service is supposed to come later this year, and then Stadia is supposed to be 
coming late this year, so I wouldn't necessarily hold your breath. This is going to be something that's going to come out immediately, and apparently LG is updating WebOS to make it look better, but you'll be able to do cloud streaming natively from your device. This also kind of coincides with, I believe it's Samsung who has partnered up with Microsoft to bring xCloud to their TV. So not only are we going to have a cloud streaming war, we're also going to have a TV cloud streaming war, which is just it. I love war. It just it. I love TV wars. It's all fantastic and jubilant. But in case LG's OLED TVs are too big for you, they've announced that they are working on a smaller version. A 42 inch OLED panel should be coming out later this year, as well as the fact that they're gonna be in increasing the brightness on a brand new lineup known as OLED Evo in case the brightness on the OLED TVs wasn't good enough. And in case 42 inches is still too big, they also announced their 4K ultra fine 32 inch OLED monitor, which is insane amount of specifications. It's going to have 99% of the DCI-P3 color space. It's going to have all of the inputs and outputs that you could possibly need, like USB-C, DisplayPort, HDMI, and all of that. It's probably going to cost somewhere in the neighborhood of $1,500 to two thousand dollars if i had to guess we don't have a release date or an actual price but just hold your whistle for that one anna now release your whistle in like a positive manner like a cat call but towards technology so it's respectful okay so check out that tcl 17 inch unfurling tablet this is obviously just a demo that they posted during ces it's not necessarily real but a printed oled scrolling display that's going to roll out into 17 inches long and give you all the viewing pleasure that you might want once again Speaking of all the pleasure you could possibly want in this life, is there any greater desire of man than to be on the open seas, to have a vessel that can cruise atop the crested waves? Well, no, there's not. I'm on a boat is the pinnacle of humanity, and now you can dock your boat, or you can't, because Volvo is gonna be rolling out their self-docking boat technology, which they showed off, I believe it was two years ago, and now you're gonna actually be able to pick up this spring, as long as you have a Volvo Penta motor yacht, and it's between 35 and 120 feet. If you have a 135 foot yacht, sorry, you suck, and you're gonna have to figure that out. Downgrade your yacht, okay? Upgrade to the self-parking yacht, you pieces of crap. And you might not want to pick up that iPhone upgrade just yet, because apparently there is a report coming out from the British Heart Rhythm Society that indicates that the iPhone 12's MagSafe technology might be shutting off pacemakers, which is a life-saving device for a lot of people. Apple themselves claims that even though the iPhone 12 contains more magnets than prior iPhone models, they're not expected to pose a greater risk of magnetic interference to medical devices than prior iPhone models. However, in this British Heart Rhythm Society publication, they said that the implantable cardioverter defibrillator ICD or pacemaker as it's colloquially known, essentially caused immediate suspension of the pacemaker's therapies as soon as the iPhone 12 was there. And then once it was removed, it was fine. However, this was with the phone being close to the chest area, let's say in like a breast pocket that you would have, it could cause issues in that regard. Now, obviously this is one study that is being published at this point, it's not yet known if this is gonna be a widespread issue or there might need to be some data that has to re-verify here. But if you have a pacemaker, maybe take it a little easy with bringing that iPhone 12 close to your chest or maybe better yet, just, you know, pick up Android. <laughs> not a joking matter, Brett, it's life and death. Wow, okay. And uh, the life of this episode of Hot News is now coming to a close. Bad transition to talking about the fact that you should check out Dr. Squatch, why don't you go ahead and use the link in the video description. Smell great, smell like Reese in case you want to, because you can with the cool, was it the cool aloe one? Yeah. Check it out at the link in the video description, my friend. But with that being said, I will hopefully see you over on our Twitch channel right now as we're as I'm finishing up this episode. I'm currently live on Twitch talking or listening to NVIDIA and all of the good details that are coming out from them on that. With that being said, I'm Brett. Goodbye. Hot news. Hop news.